drink beer. Think beer. You're listening to Brew Bloods. Episode 84, Brew Bloods. We are back in the studio, sort of. At least we're back to full episodes. My name's Mark, Professor of Stuff. Joined on the Hangout with Dustin, Professor of Things. Well, we're both in a studio. We are. That's true. You're in your studio. I'm in mine. And we're both buried deep in the confines of the earth. Exactly. We, uh, we each dug a personal studio. Each is the size of a football field. We dug under the even foundations gave, of all our neighbors. Even though we gave Perry a good review, you know, there's still a little bit of remnants uh, of people that don't realize that the war is over. It's kind of like those guys that were out in the South Pacific way after World War II was done. Uh, your favorite tale. You love to reference that all the time. I do. Every time I see you in person, you reference, do you remember those guys in World War II, the Japanese soldiers that thought the war wasn't actually over? Every it's freaking time. All I talk about. It's yeah. really weird. <laughs> it's weird. You should really get looking at some OCD meds to help out with that. Because really, there's not going to be any new details coming out about that ever. Yeah, unless there's still somebody out there. Uh, I guess they'd be pretty damn old at this point. I don't think that's possible. That's true. Seems impossible. <laughs> true. Seems impossible. So this is a uh, another interview. Uh, we get a chance uh, here and again to do interviews, and this is with the culture czar of Breckenridge Brewery, which uh, he'll explain in the interview what that means. But this it's is uh, of a position as it sounds. It's uh, Todd Tebow from Breckenridge Brewery, a uh, longtime employee. He just goes by much like Cher. He goes by the name Tebow, and he does have an album coming out this spring. Probably be kind of in the same range, I would assume. Yeah, it's his cover of uh, Disco Hits, but their jazz interpretation of Disco Hits. <laughs> exactly. Well, based on Denver uh, musicians, though, because <laughs> he's very, uh, or Colorado musicians, yeah. he's very Colorado-based. Very, very obscure. Yes. So uh, this took place, uh, we got, actually we got contacted out of the blue about this, which was a, a nice surprise. Uh, we didn't have to reach out for lunch, which was great. And uh, well, we're a giant media conglomerate, so yeah, it makes sense. That's true. We do have the two football field sized recording studios in each of our houses to prove it. So <laughs> the Brutal conglomerate. Yeah, so it took place down at the, the Happiest Hour, uh, a place we had never been, I'd never heard of. I think it's only been open just over a year or something like that. It's, it appears to be a pub and like a, and but I like a modernist take on a pub. Point. Yeah, I would like to go back there at some point if for nothing else to use their VR helmets that are obviously there for public use. Well, those were not there for, those were Breckenridge's and we didn't, we had to rush out of there because you had to get back to work. And those were Breckenridge's too, so you could experience the, uh, a, a virtual tour of their brewery. Oh, well, now I'm even more upset I missed it. Yeah, you should be upset. You should blame uh, blame your company and tell them they're all fired. Stupid work. Yeah, stupid, stupid, stupid work. Job. Ruined everything. So, uh, Happiest Hours, it's a modernist take on a pub. They got, uh, I don't know how many taps they have, but they have, it looked like 40 or 50 at least. Good good to see another uh, pub and more tap handles uh, out there in Dallas. Uh, it's If you want it, if you're in Dallas, you want to go check it out. It's really close to the American Airlines Center where the Mavericks play, so... Yeah, it's got a really big outdoor area, too, that looks like it'd be good for the spring. Yeah, a giant patio when sometime between March and June before things become really intolerable. Exactly. In this state. So here it is. There's an interview with Todd Tebow from Breckenridge Brewery. We're here at uh, Happiest Hour in downtown Dallas. I have to confess, I'd never heard of this place before. And uh, admittedly, though, I am not down. I try not to be downtown very much. But uh, Dustin and I are here, and we're here with uh, Tebow from Breckenridge Brewery. Your, uh, your official title is Culture Czar. I am the Culture Czar, yes. <laughs> well, thanks for inviting us to come out tonight. Absolutely. Thank um, you, guys. You guys are here. I guess, well, let's start with that. What the hell is a Culture Czar? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair enough question. Uh, I've been with the brewery uh, l- uh, right around 21 years. Uh, wow. Out of uh, actually, we'll celebrate our 27th anniversary February 7th. Uh, so just uh, just around the corner. So uh, I was uh, one of our very first sales reps, uh, kind of cruising around. Matter of fact. Uh, uh, Texas used to be one of my 12 markets I used to call on. So, uh, and Dallas specifically, way back in the days when uh, C.R. Goodman had a distributorship down here before uh, uh, Benny Keith bought them out. Uh, okay. It was an old warehouse down on, uh, if I remember, Ladybird Lane, I think, something like That's that. That's way before so, our time. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've been around a while, and, and uh, I'm just the guy that carries all the stories, all the good ones, all the bad yeah. ones, all the funny ones. Usually the bad ones turn into funny ones eventually, but uh, 
Um, so um, I deal with culture, um, community, all of our community outreach, um, much like a lot of craft breweries. Mm. Uh, we do a lot in, in uh, you know, for instance, today uh, we worked... Um, we're down here doing a crew drive, but this morning we went over and worked at uh, the uh, North Texas uh, Food Bank. Oh, cool. Uh, so we like to give back wherever we can. And then I manage all of our events um, from simple little 200-person uh, beer festivals uh, to uh, if you have the opportunity to come up to our brewery up in uh, Littleton, Colorado, which we're about 10 miles south of downtown Denver, uh, we have uh, concerts. Um, where we brought in you know, some bluegrass bands like Leftover Salmon, uh, and uh, yeah, great. It's an awesome name. They, they've become great friends of mine, and uh, we had seven thousand people at the brewery for that one. Wow. So, and uh, and then uh, also I do a lot of education. Okay. Uh, just uh, uh, just teaching people about uh, craft beer. I think uh, that's how we get more and more people to drink all of our beers. Yeah. As we get uh, more craft breweries uh, opening. Uh, we need more craft beer drinkers. So uh, from the original days of when uh, I was trying to sell Breckenridge beer to people that didn't quite understand it, and they would say, oh, it tastes like soap. <laughs> <laughs> but we got we, we just trying to get them over that yeah. hump. Just keep plugging away. So I, I guess one of those things is obviously we're here for the uh, Breck Trek. Uh, it's called Breck Trek Culture Tour. And I'm guessing this is... Uh, you're going to low at 11 cities, is that right? Uh, we're going to 12. 12, 12 cities okay. in 11 months. Uh, just for whatever reason, uh, we decided I shouldn't be traveling uh, during the holidays in <laughs> right. December. So uh, we kind of squashed a couple together. I think uh, we almost go back to back with... Uh, might be hitting Orlando and then New York City within yeah. like a couple weeks or so. So... Um, yeah, what else am I going to do? So, so you're basically doing one city a month. How Are you going all around the country, or is it just like the south? Or? Uh, yeah. We, um, what we did is we looked at, uh, for this first original version, um, what uh, kind of our bigger markets. Right. And certainly uh, Dallas uh, is our... Or I should say Texas is our second biggest market outside of Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, so it became first. It became the guinea pig on the very first one. Right. Um, but, yeah, we'll even uh, roll into, you know, uh, Cleveland and uh, Orlando and New York, like I said, Philadelphia, Phoenix, L.A., San Francisco. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's not bad. I, I think I get like a – basically the way I see it is about a – a paid vacation once yeah. a month. <laughs> so are you guys are you guys rolling in buses or RVs or are you taking planes somehow with all the beer? Well, I did drive down here from Denver right. uh, for this particular one just to bring a bunch of stuff with us. Right. But uh, uh, if I get my act together and figure out every nut and bolt that we need, um, we'll put it all in crates and mm -hmm. ship it uh, okay. to the distributor with our beer. Uh, and the whole intent, we've got our brewers. We didn't... Um, we brought a few kind of uh, unique beers, but the, as we really get this role in the brewers uh, back at the brewery are, are coming up with some even more unique stuff that we'll nice. be able to uh, uh, tap in. And so uh, those crazy beers will be able to uh, travel right along with uh, uh, some of the artwork that we brought and the VR kiosk and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So I guess let's briefly talk about this. So we're right next to some great artwork. And... The, it's an apparel company named Ink Monster, right? And yeah, they Ink, coordinated Ink this art show. Do I get yeah. to pop up art show? Ink Monster is uh, a, a company in uh, in Denver uh, that we do a lot of work with. Matter of fact, uh, they do a lot of uh, the uh, what would be called truck wraps uh, that okay. our distributors throughout the, the country would either put on you know big uh, beer trucks, semis, uh, or even uh, uh, a delivery van or something like that. So they uh, print the graphics. Right. Uh, cool. Kind of take our ID and do whatever they do with it, mush it around a little bit to uh, make sure it fits a van, that kind of thing, and then uh, ship it off to a distributor, or uh, they'll install it as well. But what they've done is uh, they're very um, well tied into the art community, uh, specifically in Denver, and uh, this is a smaller traveling version of what's called the uh, uh, Sticky Art Show. Right. And so really what they're doing is uh, they're applying basically high-tech, incredible stickers mm. uh, to uh, a, a backdrop of kind of a faux brick. Right. Um, but they truly do this kind of stuff 
on buildings throughout the country. So uh, it, sometimes you'll see artwork. Matter of fact, that, well, we worked real close with them where we took an alley. Uh, in downtown Denver, just off of uh, the 16th Street Mall, which is a pedestrian mall just in downtown, and and uh, kind of dressed up the alley with uh, a little bit of uh, cool artwork. And we popped our logo in here and there, yeah. but it's mostly 99% artwork. And the recurring theme in all these pieces you've got with you is beer and Breckenridge, obviously. Yeah, we gave them a couple, you know, kind of, you know, uh, knowing that uh, we were going on this tour. So, yeah, we wanted the artwork uh, to uh, certainly mention um, beer or uh, or the process and certainly um, Colorado. Yeah, they, there's a couple of really cool pieces. One of them is right behind you by Amanda Luong, I think. Yeah, that's there's my one, favorite of the which show. Which one? Uh, Amanda Luong, right, right here by you. It's about the beer process. Oh, it's sure. Got, yeah, that's a pretty yeah. cool one. Are these, are these pieces going be for sale of it at the end of the tour you know um we talked about that as we uh we did a beer dinner last night at the mud hen which was fantastic by the way chef suki over there uh just crushed it she was a lot of fun to work with and so uh i grabbed a couple pieces and and uh uh kind of used them as the, uh the backdrop for right. me standing in front of folks and uh yeah, people uh, kind of wanted them. So it wasn't something that we anticipated. Um, however, when we get back to Denver, we're definitely going to talk to the folks over at uh, Ink Monster. And, uh, heck, that'll make it a lot easier on yeah. me if we... Uh, <laughs> yeah, just doing some prints. I mean, yeah, some certainly. postal prints would go... We, would we could awesome. possibly raffle them off or, you know, to give them away. Or, heck, there may be an opportunity to where... Uh, uh, we could possibly uh, uh, sell them and and uh, again give to some kind of local nonprofit or something like that. So we'll we'll check into that. So not to make this uh, too much about you, we'll make it mostly about Breckenridge. But we <laughs> like to ask people, uh, any brewery representative, uh, what did you do before you got into the craft beer scene, and um, also maybe what motivated you to leave and explore the craft beer scene? Sure enough. Uh, well. I like to say, uh, I proudly say, I was doomed for life. Um, I grew up in a household. My father uh, worked for a beer distributor in Denver, and my grandfather uh, ran a huge warehouse liquor store. Uh, so uh, I did try to break away briefly uh, right uh, during college and a little bit after college. Uh, rebellious uh, face. Pardon? Your rebellious face? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And uh, so I, I worked a little bit um, at a golf course, um, and uh, I ran the golf shop there for a little bit, so that was fun. I was a big-time golfer, and then uh, after about eight years or so, I just got completely burnt out on golf. Matter of fact, I don't think I – last time I played golf truly was I was down here in Dallas. I'd hauled my golf clubs down here, and I played in um, – I played with Key Schlabs, uh, who kind of runs all the Flying Saucers, Mud Hen, all right. the, that, that group. And uh, I got back to Denver with my clubs, and I was so hungover from having waste too much fun, I left my clubs at the, at the airport. <laughs> and, and the airline kept calling me, hey, yeah. sir, your clubs are here. Come pick them up. After 30 days, we're getting rid of them. And I just never picked them up again. <laughs> so I never played golf again. Uh, and uh, I was, uh, it's kind of funny. So I left the, the golf business uh, and I started to work for uh, the Budweiser distributorship up in Denver. And um, I uh, uh, ran special event, uh, special events and promotions division. So uh, I was that guy that uh, was in charge of the Bud Girls. Right. <laughs> Craziest job I've ever had. <laughs> Never heard more hair problems and car problems in my life. <laughs> Um, it's not as glamorous as you may think. You deal with any Clydesdales or anything? No, no, I didn't have to scoop up anything from the <laughs> Clydesdales or anything like that. Uh, but uh, which was more fun uh, was I dealt with all the sport venues and concert venues yeah. and stuff like that. Get a lot of Super Bowl tickets out of that? Uh, no, I never got to go to a Super Bowl. Uh, but uh, I certainly uh, got to go to every single show. If you're familiar uh, up in Colorado with a great outdoor venue called Red Rocks, right. uh, which many artists say it's the best place they ever play it's very spiritual and then of course you know bronco games and, and nuggets nice. games and all that kind of stuff but um that kind of lifestyle will kill you yeah <laughs> and uh, it's funny so coors field opened up downtown denver um uh i think it was 1995 i think the stadium opened and uh, that was my last year working for bud because i, I one of my venues was coors field 
Uh, it was funny. Uh, we, we sold more Budweiser kegs out of Coors Field than Coors <laughs> did. Sorry, Coors guys. Um, but right across the street uh, was, uh, at the time, uh, Breckenridge Brewery's second brew pub. And so I'd pop in there and have beers, and I got to know uh, uh, our founder, and uh, he finally was ready to put a sales team together. He's like, you know what you're doing. And, I mean, it was basically a handshake across nice. the bar, and, and here I am 21 years <laughs> later. <laughs> and it flew by. So I assume you enjoy this a lot more than you did sales. I absolutely do. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, you would think after 21 years, I'm, you know, of course, there's been weird and crazy things that have happened, but... Um, I'm always really proud, you know, or happy, I should say. You know, a lot of us, oh, it's Sunday. I don't want to go to work, you know, Monday. And right. I, I can honestly, truthfully say I've never had, you know, the Sunday blues. Nice. Well, it's, uh, I guess you kind of came full circle then because we kind of wanted to talk about the, you know, the elf in the room, the purchase by AB and Bell. Sure. Um, and being the face of the company, we're always curious. So we've always, ta- you know, taken the line that it's, I lo- we like the independent guys to maintain, maintain so independent. So do I. But some of, some them, of my best friends. Yeah. <laughs> and we just saw Revolver sell out late, uh, uh-huh. uh, a couple months ago. They got uh, they sold themselves, I guess. And we always say, well, as long as they continue to make graft, craft or good beer and they continue to maintain that craft spirit, you know, then if they want to make a buck, I don't blame them. So we're kind of curious, like, uh, how, well, being kind of a face of the company, because you're always out and about, um, have you f- seen a lot of criticism for both literally and a lot of people accuse you of metaphorically selling owls. Sure. And how do you respond to that criticism? Well, first of all, um, I do, you know, when it was announced uh, that um, AB InBev was purchasing uh, Breckridge to the rest of the staff, I thought I was funny because I remember my story. I used to work for right. Comes uh, circle, Budweiser yeah. in Denver, and that is a, a brewery-owned branch. Um, so I told everybody I was a 20-year mole. <laughs> for Budweiser. And yeah. I'm glad you guys laughed because no one at the brewery did. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be honest, uh, you know, when it all kind of came down, I knew about it a little bit before the announcement. Uh, I kind of brought, got brought into the fold. And um, uh, I think uh, I wanted to throw up about every third day. Um, but truthfully, I, I probably would want to throw up every third day. It doesn't matter who bought it, right. you know, like, oh, what's happening? Yeah, it's got to make uh, you nervous for sure. Yeah, exactly. And that's really where it was. And, and it was more of, you know, what's happening, you know, to my baby. This is the brand that um, I'm so invested in, in a sense, uh, uh, sweat equity wise. Yeah. Um, I own a little bit of the brewery uh, uh, at the time, but not a whole lot. It was just more, you know, stock options type yeah. stuff, if you will. But um, uh, not enough to where... <laughs> yeah, you could retire. <laughs> yeah, I'm, st- I'm still <laughs> going to work, which, shoot. by yeah. the way, if I did have that big old check, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I would still work for the brewery because I do love it and I love the people. But um, those were difficult days. They really were. And yeah. there were a lot of people that... Um, uh, you know, most of the people in the industry understood. Right. Um, did they like it? Probably not. But understood. Uh, the, the industry is changing. Um, the, and there, uh, there were some consumers that were, you know, pretty fired up. Uh, and I get it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I wasn't you know, complaining in a sense, but inside, I think I was upside sure. down too. So, um, and again, I think that would have happened just about if anybody purchased uh, the brewery, what's going to happen? What, you know, what's going to change? You know, we, you, the, all that stuff go through your mind. And uh, what really started to bother me mostly is just, you know, folks were starting to tell me what was going to happen. <laughs> and, uh, right. um, of course I don't want to believe them. And so far, um, they're wrong. Uh, not, I, and I'm not going to be one of those guys that says, oh, nothing will change. Uh, of course it's going to change, man. If I bought something, I'm going to change it. You buy a new house, you're going to paint the walls. Whatever. Uh, you know, you're going to move the furniture. You're going to put the furniture in different places than the folks that lived there before. Yeah, stuff will change. But hopefully um, we have the opportunity. And so far, AB InBev has been really cool about you know, letting us grow and, and truthfully, what do you need type of thing. So, um, 
I, I, I say it was like the, the best thing, not the best thing, but probably it was time for something like that to happen to Breck, you know, in our 25th, 26th, now 27th year. Um, and you got, you know, guys like me that have been around forever and like, well, this is the way we've always done it. Um, yeah, it might have been a punch in the face, but uh, it, it did wake us up a little bit in the sense of let's reexamine stuff. Uh, so that's the cool stuff that's coming in. And I'm amazed that when AB uh, InBev came in and said, what do you need? We started giving a list. And mm-hmm. they'd take care of that. And they're like, okay, now what else do you need? So they've been oh, fantastic nice. in that sense. Um, and I'm kind of bragging. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, on the distribution side, um, that's where it starts to get tricky. Um, we're part of a, a distribution network that is, they crush it. Yeah, I, that was going to be one of my questions was, yeah. that's what, we talked to a Goose Island rep as well, who went through the same kind of experience, uh-huh. and they said what they found was that uh, AB InBev tended to let them kind of do their own thing with like their Bourbon County style and their specialty beers, but then it kind of took some of the pressure off of them to do some of their more common beers, like their IPA and their, and their 312 and things like that. So I was curious if you guys kind of ex- have experienced that, that maybe some of the brewing has been, some of the br- brewing pains have maybe been lifted a little bit and the distribution has been beneficial. Yeah, you know, um, we on our own uh, were on a, a really good path. And about a year and a half ago, we opened up our new brewery. It's on 12 acres. Um, a much needed capacity. Uh, I think we hover right at around 110,000 barrel capacity right now. So we did that kind of on our own. Um, so uh, we had gotten ourselves to a spot to where we didn't need to be rescued. Um, I will tell you that uh, on the sales side of things, it sure is nice uh, not to have to necessarily worry like, oh my God, uh, we have to sell a crap ton of beer this month because. Yeah. We have a loan payment coming, uh, so that sure has been nice. And I think anybody that owns a brewery, um, I'm sure they have loans. And uh, uh, that whole, uh, you know, thing kind of went away. And I, I wish that for t- for anybody. Right. Um, but yeah, distribution wise, and um, you know, there are beers that, um, you know, we at the new brewery we were not quite at capacity, um, but. Uh, with that said, um, our number one selling beer, Vanilla Porter, is moving over uh, to uh, uh, the um, AB Brewery out of Fort Collins, Colorado. And uh, our brewery uh, brewmaster and, and brewery director, uh, Todd Usry, uh, has been very, very involved with that process. Uh, so far, you know, a few batches have been rejected and stuff like that. So it hasn't happened yet. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing with AB InBev. Uh, you know, I get it with the big corporations and stuff like that. You hear the stuff like, oh, cut corners and use inferior ingredients. Um, that is not the case with uh, AB. Um, they're very insistent. Where possibly in the old days when we didn't have the money to mess around and yeah. dump a batch of beer, um, we probably wouldn't have dumped it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just can't. But with uh, AB InBev, they're like, if it is not right, that we're not doing it. So uh, it's Todd's call, uh, basically. Okay. Uh, so it's, it, And it's his job to get it right. So uh, And then, yes, that capacity goes away um, or, you know, moves to a different brewery. And then, then our breweries, or our brewers are able to really kind of mess around. Our brewers at the main brewery in Littleton, um, you know, they're machines. They're, you know, they've always... It's, they're making vanilla porter most of the time. Every brewery has a flagship beer. Right. And truthfully, probably most brewers are, like, really bored with making it, mm-hmm. uh, much like a restaurant. You know, and, uh, you have chefs that are so talented, and yeah, they they're tired of it. flipping burgers. But that's what sells the best. So right. um, they've always been jealous of our brewer at our original brew pub in Breckenridge, which was part of the acquisition. Uh, it, we demanded it from uh, AB InBev because it, it's a big part of our culture. And, and our brewer, Jimmy, up there, he's got a 10-barrel system, and he likes to say he's got the best job in the world. He lives in a great ski town. He skis by morning and makes beer by night. and He does have the best job. <laughs> 
I have the second best, but he ha- he has the best. Well, so <laughs> do they uh, do they give you a lot of leeway to experiment? Because I mean, as we know, with a lot of big beer, uh, you know, they at least especially AB and Bev and Coors, they got they have like four beers and they stuck to them for decades. And then obviously craft beers coming along and and you know really kicking the butt of the industry to innovate. Do they give you that freedom to keep making experimental thing, experimental batches, and? Maybe bring things into the fold? They not only um, give us the leeway to do that, they demand it. Um, it yeah, so really as far as um, really the directive is um, make a better beer, the best beer you can, and uh, innovate and keep experimenting. So uh, we've uh, really, again, a brewery that's been around a while, we think we have all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of, you know, you get a little comfy sometimes. And, and you think, oh, we got this one. Vanilla Porter sells great. Yeah. We're good. Uh, but no, stuff's changing, man. Right. And uh, so uh, they've opened our eyes uh, to say, hey, um, you know, Vanilla Porter may be number one today, uh, but is it going to be five years from now? Yeah. Um, you know, when we opened up the brewery, Avalanche or Amber Ale was our number one selling beer. And um, we started making vanilla porter on a whim. It was a seasonal beer. And uh, we just never stopped making it because it just kept selling. And um, probably in spite of ourselves, because, uh, shoot, we barely even made a tap handle for that beer. And certainly no, you know, not even a metal sign for a bar uh, to promote that beer. And, and vanilla porter became number one. Yeah, that's always uh, been my kinda, favorite. Yeah, so it's... That stuff can happen. So, um, and if if you don't want to answer this, you can't, or because it's too political. I'm just going to ask the question. I'll cut it out if, yeah. if you don't want. It's all right. Answer. I, I'm curious when they came out with the Super Bowl commercials that were very critical of craft beer. I'm sorry. What'd you say there? Uh, when they when they had the Super Bowl commercials that were very oh. critical of craft beer about making yeah. fun of the peach bourbon whatever flavors sure. and making fun of those people they had just acquired. Uh, how did you guys at the brewery feel about that? And did you respond to your parent company? Well. Um, a couple of things. Um, my assistant um, got all fired up, and I think most of the crop brewing industry got really fired up. Yeah. Um, if you go back and you take a look at a history, uh, go on to YouTube. We don't have links on our website to it anymore uh, just because it was so long ago. Uh, but if you go onto YouTube, and, and I know we have a Breckenridge Brewery page or whatever it's called on YouTube, but search uh, Truth and Beer Vertising. And um, I, I had a lot of fun with our head brewer, uh, Bob, and I made fun of all of, let's call them domestic brewery beer commercials. Right. Uh, matter of fact, you know, even to the point where, you know, with Coors and their, you know, cold activated um, uh, labels, um, and I've got Bob up there and... and uh, um, and he says, uh, we have a proprietary way to tell if your beer is cold, and it's if you touch it and it's cold, then it's cold. <laughs> yeah. And so... Uh, it's funny, Nankasi did that same thing at the same yeah. time. I guess everybody was kind of reacting to that. Yeah, so uh, we've, uh, we've always, or, uh, you know, uh, made fun of some of those old, you know... I, I'm a marketing guy for the brewery, of course, and right. uh, marketing guys are full of crap. And, uh, you know, they, they make shit up. And so... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm making fun of all those guys. Yeah. And uh, when I saw the commercial, uh, I personally, I didn't, I didn't, again, I know, I know the source uh, of marketing guys that don't know what they're talking about. And I, it, to me, it was like, finally, another commercial I can go, you know, go make fun of. So I think what they did, I, I don't know if it was smart on their part to kind of stir the pot. Um, I, I don't think that commercial necessarily represented the high-end breweries uh, because it was a Budweiser commercial. Right. Um, I don't know if they... It, truly, I, I've not talked to anybody that... I, the AB InBev so big, I don't even know who was responsible that, for that commercial. But I would like to ask them, sure. if, if, we, if you had the opportunity to go back and redo it, would you? Yeah. And I have a feeling they wouldn't. Um, I don't know. It, it, <laughs> it, it really doesn't bother me. And yeah, really. I, trust me, ever since that happened, I've been toying in my head, how do I make fun of that commercial and not get in too much trouble? Right. Well, we'll, we'll, see, <laughs> we'll see here in a few weeks uh, with the next big game uh, if they roll out anything else like that. I, I know, I mean, a lot of, obviously a lot of people were pissed off, but um, I guess yeah, it was kind of ironic uh, yeah. Yeah, when it came out. And then right, the as they're making all those happened. acquisitions. Yeah. I'll guarantee you, well, the marketing guys may not have known it was coming down the pike. So, <laughs> right. You know, it's, 
and that, that's you know it a lot of that stuff is so uh, disconnected you know most of us that work for smaller crop breweries you know all the decisions are made within about 20 feet of every other each right. other and you know uh, companies like that it, it's made you know the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing yeah yeah, yeah 20,000 miles apart so yeah I don't know I <laughs> I, I don't like the commercial. Right. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> Fair I, enough. I, I think it's the craft brewing industry doesn't deserve that. Yeah. I, all right. So uh, let's get into the lightning round here. So what was your first beer? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was thinking this morning, and whenever I think about this, no one has ever asked me that question. And I, for whatever reason, I thought that this morning, and I had to go back and think. Uh, so I can't say I know exactly what it is, uh, but uh, in my, you know, as I started to, to drink beer... I'm not saying when I turned 21, obviously. None of us, right? <laughs> uh, but I was, uh, I was living in Boulder, uh, going to the University of Colorado, and I, I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to be one of two beers. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it was probably Boulder Pale Ale, okay. which they don't even make anymore, but that was kind of my go-to beer, uh, even before like a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale uh, really grew to where they are in size. Uh, or... Um, for whatever reason, just because it was uh, uh, readily available in a lot of different places, uh, it was probably some form of Pete's Wicked Ale, <laughs> which doesn't even exist anymore. And right. th- there's a tragedy, and, and truthfully, I, uh, I, I get why people are like, oh, big corporation's going to buy a, uh, your brewery and it goes away, and Miller Brewing Company did that to uh, uh, Pete's Wicked Ale. So, yeah, um, I, th- I, I really think the big guys have learned. Um, yeah, I hope you're right. <laughs> yeah, I, I do too, man. I, <laughs> for, for your sake and ours. <laughs> you, you have no idea. And certainly, if it isn't going right, I'll, I'll be standing on the top of the conference table. <laughs> Not that I'll win, but I certainly will leave, leave a mark. Uh, what was your first craft beer, like your gateway beer into the craft industry? Hmm. Um, I would probably, uh, you know, that, it, it, again, an, an old, um, uh, it's an old Texas beer, Peter, uh, Peter Sellis, Sellis White. Never had that. Uh, pardon? Never had that. Yeah, Peter Sellis uh, was uh, the brewmaster, and I believe he was based at somewhere in Texas. Uh, it might have been Dallas. I, I, we'd have to go back in history and take a look. Uh, but um, I think his daughter now is trying to uh, resurrect that whole company. But um, that was another brand I believe Miller Brewing Company bought, and um, uh, it just didn't quite fit into their business model. Uh, so they didn't know what to do with it. Uh, but um, Peter, um, Peter Sellis was uh, the brewmaster for Hogarden. And, okay. uh, you know, he kind of, uh, he left there and came to, to Texas and created this great brewery. So Sellis White. So it doesn't exist anymore. Okay. So. Well, that's, that's why I can say those beers, right? <laughs> <laughs> so outside of uh, Breckenridge, what's your favorite brewery and why is your favorite brewery? Uh, um, I probably had, if it's okay, um, I... I I always, I'm very, very proud uh, and uh, have worked hard with a lot of uh, Colorado craft breweries. And I'm really proud of the Colorado craft brewing industry. So I always like to say uh, a Colorado brewery, uh, but also a national brewery. Right. Um, I'm a huge fan. And and truthfully, if I had my way uh, and if I didn't work for Breckenridge Brewery, I I would, I'd be honored uh, to work for Odell Brewing Company. Okay. Um, I just, I think... All the way around, uh, their philosophy is a little bit like ours, where you know, just I mean, really with Breck, uh, the way uh, I helped position Breckenridge Brewery at the beginning was we wanted our beers. Just we don't, you know, we're, we're uh, we don't have to be that wow moment. We just want to be your everyday beer. So if it's uh, you know a Thursday night and you're having a beer, you're having a Breck beer. But if it's it's Friday and it's your birthday, then you may go have something, you know, <laughs> right. that wow beer. Yeah. Uh, so. That's where we've always been with Breck. Um, we're not going to, you know, completely blow your socks off sometimes, but it, we're going to be comfortable as can be. Uh, so that's why I like Odell as well. Um, I just fantastic beers all the way around. Doug at, at Odell's an old friend. Got yeah, way we, too many <laughs> stories of hanging out with Doug. We may have to hook up later. We had a chance. That he was here last uh, two months ago. He travels a ton, man. Yeah, he, and uh, he's a, he's such a good dude. And we had a chance to to talk to him, and we missed him by one hour because. Well, our, he was gonna. He was the Whole Foods on Park Lane, 
And we were going to go up there and talk to him and uh, didn't have anything formal scheduled. But we got there and we realized we were an hour late and he left an hour early because nobody showed up to the event. Wow. And so he just sat there with his rep, you know, just yeah, hanging out. Having and some beers. I was so mad about that. They didn't promote it very much, so yeah. nobody knew he was there. It was just him and his, his uh, other rep there. Yeah, it would have been perfect. Yeah, it was like 10 a.m. on a Saturday, which is a terrible time for mm-hmm. beer. That's, yeah, events. that's a little weird. But, yeah, two of the greatest guys, I think, in, in Colorado – craft beer if you have the opportunity to hang out and have a beer with them doug odell is certainly one and adam avery is the other just okay they, they deserve everything great uh they've worked hard and and both of those two guys are still at it yeah. working very very hard as if you know the very first day uh, they release their beer so nationwide um i have a lot of respect for firestone walker um I just, I, I, I don't. Do they make a bad beer? <laughs> Not that I don't know of. I don't think I've even had an old beer of theirs that you know you probably should take off the shelf was bad. I, yeah. I just, uh, yeah, that, they're doing it right. Um, all right, so you already mentioned the one Texas beer, but do you have any currently active favorite Texas beers? You know, um, I, 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 I don't. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Um, I I just don't know uh, the the Texas market that well. Right. Uh, when it, you know, like I said, when I um, when I was calling on Texas, um, hell, it was even long enough ago to where most people don't know that we had a brew pub right uh, here in Dallas because um, of the crazy laws we were distributing. Then we opened up the brew pub. We had to stop distributing. I think they've fixed that law now. So I'm just not in tune with, uh, with uh, the Texas market that much. Um, yeah, but fair enough. I did stop by yesterday. Um, I had to make an airport run, and I had an extra half an hour. So uh, I was down in the downtown area here, and I stopped at uh, New Elm. Uh, or, no, or not New. Oh, uh, Deep Elm? Deep Elm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, popped in real quick. I had a porter, uh, which was delicious and uh uh, I've yeah. heard a lot of good things about those guys. Yeah, they make a lot of good beers. I, I, I had hoped to hit a lot more breweries. And matter of fact, I'm going to extend my stay through the weekend. A good friend of mine, uh, Travis, lives here in uh, Dallas. And uh, he's the founders, one of the founders reps. Okay. Uh, founders Brewing Company rep. So um, I'm going to hit a few breweries. I, I'd hoped to get through them through this week, but it's just been kind of busy. So. Yeah. Uh, by the time I leave Texas, I, w- I will have a couple <laughs> beers. Yeah, uh, I'll Deep email Elm's, them to you. Deep Elm's good. Lakewood's good. I've heard uh, that, yeah. Noble Ray's good. They're a brew pub, and they they, uh, they can. Yeah, I, I think it's... Pedicolas, for sure. Pedicolas, yeah. Definitely hit Pedicolas. Oh, okay. Definitely hit oh, a yeah. Pedicolas. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, I just had uh, lunch today at... Um, the Rodeo Goat, and I think they're doing a tap takeover there of like 22 yeah. beers coming up or something. Yeah, if you have a chance, his pet, his uh, brewery, he's got, just opened up a new tap room. It's not too far from here. So okay. if you have a chance, it's uh, he only he doesn't bottle or can. So he uh, tried the Velvet Hammer. It's one of our favorites. And I, everybody I, probably hates us that we're always blowing smoke you know, his ass. I can, really, <laughs> I can really appreciate that. You know, one, I, I get a lot of people, especially up in Colorado, and they're like, you know, like Tebow, you know, I um, started this brewery, you know, what should we do? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you know everything. And I'm like, no, I don't. And we, we fell on our face a few thousand times is all we did. Uh, but, you know, obviously the business is changing right. um, and uh, becoming a little bit different. And uh, I, I think there's definitely uh, still a lot of room for craft breweries. Um, they may not grow to the size, you know, that you may see of some of these national breweries and stuff like that uh, because of breweries that are in place and, you know, situations like we're in and stuff like that. Uh, but um, certainly, uh, I think every neighborhood certainly needs a, a craft brewery. And when people figure out their business model, uh, whether uh, you know, d- distribution is not bad, it just just whatever you do, don't run your tap room out of beer. I see a lot yeah. of breweries doing that because right. it's so competitive out there, yeah. and so you end up running your tap room out of beer, which is your profit center to keep a stupid tap handle on it, yeah. some account because. They threaten to take you off if you don't have the beer. So, uh, figure out where your distribution model is, and is it is it is it ten blocks? Is it ten miles? Is it ten states? Mm-hmm. But once you get outside your own state, I I just say be very very careful, man. It's it's great advice. I I get it, man. I've I've rolled to Charleston, South Carolina, and there's a tap handle of Avalanche on, and it's the coolest thing feeling in the world. Yeah. But if you start doing the math, 
what it took to get there, yeah. you probably lost 25 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, obviously, your name, last name's not spelled the same way, but how sick are you of pe- uh, people asking if you're related to Tim Tebow, and how much do you hate me for bringing that up? <laughs> I was just going to say, I thought we were getting along. <laughs> there, it is funny. A lot of people do. Even even people uh, that I'll meet, and I'll say, "Hey, my name's Todd Tebow," and they just start to call me Tim. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I get irritated. And um, I, you know, I, I'm uh, I, <laughs> I'm a native of Colorado. I'm four generations Colorado, and yeah. uh, uh, that guy doesn't even. I, I'm still employed in Colorado. He's not. Right. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I can throw a better pass. <laughs> Fair enough. And I suck at football. <laughs> well, last, uh, last question. IPA. How's that? That's good. Uh, last question. IPA or stout? Definitely stout. You know, it's funny. And a lot of people ask me that all the time. You know, oh, you must be a hophead. And I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Um, much like Breckenridge Brewery, uh, balance. I'm all about balance. And uh, so I like balance. And I think a lot of IPAs can go... Wah, crazy, right? Uh, some kind of crazy pissing contest sometimes is going on with how much hops you can stick it, stick in a beer, and that's fine. Yeah, um, it, just not for me. Uh, I'm I'm dark and malty. Yeah, uh, I'm right there with you. All right, well, Tebow, thanks uh, for your time. Uh, we people can find it if you if you want to go to the one or the other. Uh, we're the first stop. If you want to go to the one or the other, the eleven locations. Where are you headed next? Uh, as far as the the, the trek, yeah. yeah. So uh, tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure when your show will kind of oh, come out. But. Well, I was sorry. I guess the next city. What? Oh, okay. The next, the next city. city. Gotcha. Um, yeah, because tomorrow we're doing. Well, one of the one of the things we're doing with, with uh, uh, Breck Trek is uh, we're traveling with a band out of uh, Colorado called uh, Paper Bird. Right. Kind of a bluegrass uh, Americana type of band. So we're at Wits in tomorrow, okay. uh, which I'll look forward to. But um, the next stop is L.A. Okay. So it's L.A. and then Orlando. So. Uh, Book your right. flights. <laughs> go to yeah, go to breckbrew.com and right on the home page you'll see something that says Breck Track and it'll tell you all the different cities and what's going on. All right, well thanks for your time. This has been a great event and I it's uh, one of the advantages of ABM Viv obviously is you have money to spend like this and do something doing rock and roll tour like this. <laughs> you should see my really cool truck that I just got like two months ago. Yeah. I had uh, driven uh, an old beat up uh, Chevy Breckenridge van for seventeen years. Wow. And so I did just get a new truck. I, I think I earned it, but yeah, it's it's a pretty nice new truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Thanks for your time. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed the interview with uh, Todd Tebow from Breckenridge Brewery. If you ever have a chance and you're up in uh, in Littleton, go check them out. Apparently, they have a massive brewery, and I, I'm hoping I'm going to go into Denver at the end of March. I'm hoping I will have a chance to go see them. Yeah, every time I hear his last name, I either think of Tim Tebow or I think of T-Bone, like the steak. Yeah, exactly. Maybe he should, instead of T- uh, Tebow, he should just be calling himself T-Bone, much like George Costanza, and he can always exactly. make the motion with his arms anytime he walks in the room. T-Bone! Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. <laughs> Instant ideas. This is if you see him at the end of March. This is why we have a marketing company that only uh, pertains to nicknames. Right. We're nickname generators. It's not very profitable. <laughs> exactly. Should mention before we go that if you want to find out more about the Breck Trek from Breckenridge Brewery, you can go to breckbrew.com, and there's links on their site for the Breck Trek. And we should also give some credit to Paper Bird, the band that is following along on the Breck Trek tour. That was the music you heard right before the interview. If this is your first time listening to the show, you really should subscribe to the show. It's completely free. It doesn't cost you one penny. If you don't know how to do that, you can go to our website, brewbloods.net, and there are there's a page there. Just click on the Listen button. It'll tell you how to subscribe to the show. All the links to uh, various subscription options are also on that same site. Uh, RSS, iTunes, Android, any way you can dream to subscribe to the show, it's there. If you subscribe, you don't have to listen to every episode. If there's a beer that you don't care about, you can skip it. But still subscribe. No, you should. Just go ahead and download every episode. Why wouldn't you want to listen to every golden you episode? Skip it. <laughs> You're like, oh, I don't like that one. You downloaded it already, but then you delete it. Uh, we uh, we would appreciate it also if you leave us a review on iTunes. It helps us out quite a bit. And uh, check us out on all the social networks, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Snapchat. And if you have any feedback on the show, you can email us at brewbloodsshow at gmail.com. And you can call us at 469-573-BEER. That's 469-573-2337. So for Dustin, I'm Mark. For Mark, I'm Dustin. Probst. Probst. Probst.